Probably never. What I do know is this is 4F Beauty and if I've done my editing job properly, you're watching me in black and white right now. Yeah, you are. Mm-hmm. If not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. And I'm meant to do that. Really. Honest. You will have seen from the thumbnail that this is the continuation of my Zodiac series. Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, and Sagittarius. But today we are talking about the flowers of the zodiac. Most specifically, those associated with Pisces. So, if you want to know more about what those flowers are and what they represent, or you just want to watch an eyeshadow tutorial, then my friends, as I have said for some time and oft here echoed in other shall we say, less imaginative places, although they don't have a sloth straw. Mm -hmm. Grab a drink. Grab a snack. Put your feet up. And enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. It's a glorious day out there today, it really is, it's quarter past seven, the sun is out, it's bloody freezing out there, but it's a beautiful bright day at the moment. So, you will have seen from the intro that this is once again a Zodiac film, but it's the flower for Pisces which is the Daffodil and Jonquil picture, as always, editing me will put here. And as you can see, they are yellow and orange. And I've been wanting to play with this for quite a while. This is my Kaleidos Neon, which looks a little bit like this. So... You know I'm going in for these two, right? Which are Boss and Level Up. And I might use Hologram on the lid. I haven't decided yet. But yeah, so that's, that's the plan. Which hopefully will happen. Because you never can tell. You never know exactly what your eyes gonna do <laughs> yesterday's film when my eye kept watering and I was using a particularly deep blue and kept getting a stripe of lid there with nothing on it yay let's hope that doesn't happen again today fingers crossed it was a particularly high pollen day yesterday though so that could be why now this remains a teaching channel by which I mean I will be zoomed right in close to my eyes so you can actually see what I'm talking about. Um, and my chronic pain won't let me blend very quickly anyway. But I, tr I try to keep it at a speed that beginners can follow me. Because when I was learning there was nothing worse than starting to watch a tutorial and then bang, they'd speed it up or they'd cut some out and you're like, whoa, wait a minute, and you'd, you'd pause it and if you're anything like me, you're watching it on your phone and then by the time you've caught up with where they were, your screen locks come back on again and you've got powder all over your hands so you can't unlock your screen. It was third world problems, first world problems, first world problems, fibro brain, see? Fibro brain just occasionally gets unplugged, yeah. 
However, if I am going too slowly for you, or you just don't want to listen to too much of the rambling, perfectly understandable. There's a speed widget up there. Feel free to speed me up. I may sound like a chipmunk on acid, which could be slightly amusing. Who knows? But as part of my teaching methods, um, I've got deep set eyes, which for a long time I thought I had hooded lids. It was only during a pain somniac moment when I was investigating different shaped eyes just to see what other advice I could give to people with different eye shapes to myself to try and make this as accessible to as many people as possible. I realised I've actually got deep set eyes, not hooded lids. Now, the way that eyeshadow performs and wears and lasts on hooded and deep set eyes are very, very similar, which is why so many people have the confusion. However, they are very, very different in terms of the workaround and in terms of just how much lid you actually have to play with. So, a lot of people get this wrong. I even hear big beauty gurus saying that they've got hooded lids. And then I look at them and I'm like, no, you've actually got deep set eyes because, yeah. All will be explained in the clip. Um, I will insert the clip in just a moment or two. And once that is done, I'll be back to put some of this onto these. But, as I have warned you, it will be very, very up close and personal. So please don't be shocked and don't scream. I understand it may be a bit of a shock for newbies that aren't used to people actually zooming in so you can see what they're doing. <laughs> Here's the clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Crown Pebble Primer is because it's... It goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot, for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this. You can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush. Just a very light layer. And then I buff it over mm. with a fluffy blending brush take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. 
it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey, I am back. Right, okay. I'm going to be using a tapered blending brush from Boozy Shop, which basically looks like this, and is that wide at the top. However wide the head of the brush, that's how far it will blend out. So if you've got one like that, it will blend out that far. If you've got one like that, it's going to blend out more oval. If you've got one like that, it's going to contain it more. So choose an appropriate size blending brush for your type of eye. Mm. Uh, no, I haven't broken lockdown and no, there are no salons open yet and no, these aren't stick-ons. I actually had a go at doing my own acrylics, which for a first attempt, not that bad. Actually, the first attempt was the time before this. I didn't quite do it thick enough at the cuticles, so it started to chip after about four days in the shower. So I've I've actually done like an infill on them as well, so I'm quite proud of that. No training, just 10 years of watching other people do it. Right, always hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on your lid as possible. And we're going to start off with the Viennese Waltz of Blending. There's a fair amount of kick up in the pan on this. I don't know if you can see that, possibly, possibly not, um, but I just leave the kick up there, pick it up next time round, at least you know you've got pigment on your brush, which is clean, it's just stained. Now the Viennese Waltz of Blending, natural churns towards the nose, a fleckle when you get there, and reverse turns when you come back. Now. The reason I do this is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds, so the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know women and men in their 20s that have always been slim, that have very mobile eyelids. So this is a way that you can ensure you are covering the eyelid and avoiding the tiger striping without pulling the eye around too much. And you can see I'm just layering this yellow on. This is beautiful, isn't it? Isn't this just a summer's day yellow? Oof! And that's actually applying really nicely. Bright neon shades, you do struggle sometimes getting them to 
um, they'll apply like this but the minute you start to blend them a lot of them um, just fade and disappear <laughs> oh that's just a cat went past the window which is what made me think of this hubby was in, in the bath last night and he came out and he went honestly the, the drama i'm like what you are only in the shower what's going on he said well i could hear all this this hissing and growling and meowling and he said i wasn't sure if it was foxes or what or badgers or what it was because we live um quite close to a, ro uh, a river and a wood so um we do tend to get all kinds of wildlife coming up our garden because I've got like 200 foot of garden, 200 foot of allotment, railway line, river, wood. So, quite lucky where I am actually. And uh, he opened the bathroom window because obviously he was, you know, not wearing anything except a towel. <laughs> Apparently these two cats were having a domestic on the wall. And they both just stopped mid-argument and glared at him as if to go, do you mind? We're talking here. <laughs> oh, one of them just sort of like stomped off. The other one kind of glared at him and followed them. So they were either having an argument or he cock blocked them. One of the two. But either way, I found it highly amusing. So I always remember Steve saying that. Uh, in their younger days before I met Chris, he managed to cock block Steve because he was he went through a phase, he went through a goth phase where he was wearing he would only ever wear black. And he had um he used to wear black nail varnish. And Steve was chatting this girl up and he very nearly got her number. And Chris comes over, sits down and went, Your nail varnish is lovely. Can you teach me how to put nail varnish on, please? <laughs> and they completely cock blocked him, which I find hysterical because apparently Chris was completely oblivious to the fact that Steve was nearly in there, you know? So funny. So funny. Yeah, that's really, really nice actually. Um, I tend to keep the tutorial bit about the makeup and waffling and stuff. I'll tell you a little bit more about the flower uh, at the end. So if you're not into the the zodiac element, you you can you can just watch the tutorial bit and then click off if you want. I'm just cleaning the yellow off of this brush using a microfiber cloth. I used to use a colour switch, uh, but I found they were far too harsh on my brushes, especially my natural hair brushes. This is synthetic. Um, but yeah, colour switch was way too harsh on my brushes, so I don't use that now, I use a cloth. I'm now going to dip into Boss using the same brush. Yeah, this has got a lot of kick up as well, I think you can probably see it easier on this pan. But just tap back off into the pan and you can pick it up again next time. The reason I always start at the outside is if you do suddenly get a warmth of pigment, it's much easier to blend it out this side than it is over here when your nose is in the way. So I'm now going to concentrate on where my natural crease is. So if you've had to move yours, you follow where you've put your line. I'm just going to do quite tight little circles because I don't want to take it too far up the yellow. Because I want this to be like the, the trumpet part of the, the jonquil. Because daffodils tend to be um, all yellow and the jonquils are the ones with the deeper orange trumpet. Um. One of my first ever memories is when I was about, I must have been just under 18 months old because my nan died when I was 18 months old. And she was very particular about her flowers. Nobody was allowed to pick them because she hated flowers in the house because 
they died so quickly. She preferred them in the garden. And she was very, very proud of our daffodils. And I'd got one of these little pink plastic trucks as a kid. Uh, which is like a little tiny shallow basket with a big handle for those of you who don't know what a truck is. Um, and my granddad was a bit of a wind-up merchant, which is probably where I get it from. And uh, I remember him encouraging me to pick all the daffodils. But I didn't pick the stems off so you could put it into a vase. No, I just plucked her pretty heads off. And my memory is of my granddad giggling, helping me to pick all these daffodils. And then him saying, go and, go and give them to your nan then. And me coming running into this kitchen, because I bought this council house. Came running into this kitchen, going, dat deals nanny, dat deals. And nan went, oh, you've picked all my daffodils, thank you darling. And apparently she gave my granddad a right old tongue lashing later on in the day. Which I thought was just when granddad told me about that when I was older, I was just like, yep, yeah, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Right now this side you can see I've got this super deep creasing here from where my eye was pulled around when I was five years old at the ophthalmic. And they're trying to work out why I wasn't seen properly before I went blind in it. So I do struggle with this side. I have more fallout this side because this this lid moves more and I do tend to still get tiger striping there. But the biggest issue I have is when I'm putting pigment onto the mobile part of the lid on the inner corner there. Um, I do actually have to stretch that lid out because otherwise what happens is that instead of the pigment being blended onto the lid it just packs loosely into the crease and then ends up cascading down my face and getting into my eye and it's really really painful when that happens. So I will show you if you're like me where you've got deep creasing like that and you have to do this do not do it if you don't have to, because otherwise you will end up with creasing like that. And I promise you, it only gets worse as you get older. Because I didn't, I mean, bearing in mind this is damage that was done to me when I was five years old with my eye being pulled around. I didn't really notice it until I was about 41, 42, was when it suddenly became super deep creasing like that. So I will show you the method that I use and explain to you how I do it in such a way that I don't do any additional damage to the eye. I like to sit back and just check that I've got the eye shapes the same both sides because unlike a certain Jimmy Chuck, I don't photoshop my results. What you see is what you get. The only time you'll find me put a filter on something is if it's overcast and I need to brighten it up so you can see the true colours. Um, I don't do any skin blending, I don't do any smoothing of lines, I don't add things in or take things out. The only exception to that being very, very obvious, Snapchat filters. Which, if you can't spot a Snapchat filter, really, Right now, I might have been using this Revolution cucumber spray, and it keeps sort of sort of jamming up. Is it going to work today? No, apparently we're not. Okay. So I will grab. Prep fix and glow skin mist from Makeup Obsession. Never ever put a wet brush into a pressed pigment. Ever. Right, I like using lip brushes. This is just the Morphe Jeffrey one, the JS24. 
but I like it because it comes down to a point so you can get right into that inner corner and I'm going to go into a hologram which looks like a stunning colour it has to be said I'm just going to pack that onto the brush look at that wet both sides Now, you need to dry this ferrule off. The easiest way to do that is tuck it into your knuckles and spin. Because if you don't, you'll end up with moisture coming down here, loosening the glue. And then you don't have a brush, you have a stick. Right. I'm just going to pop this. On the two-thirds of the mobile lid. Which, so far has had no pigment on it. And you can see that is stunningly beautiful. This is a real summer look, isn't it? Let's spread that across the lid. And then use the tip of the bristles to just buff and blend where it meets the matte orange on the outer edge there. Right, dry the brush off. Go back in and reapply pigment. I do love these Kaleidos palettes, I really do. They are by far some of my favourite formulas and I just, I love the curated just, you know, six pans. Right, how I deal with this, I put my finger literally just to the side of where the deep creasing is and I only put it out far enough to straighten out the creasing. And then I apply the pigment to that area, making sure it's well blended onto the lid, then I let go. So I only stretch the part of the lid that already has the deep creasing. I only stretch it out as far as is necessary to straighten that creasing out. I, I don't pull it out to my ear roll. And as soon, as soon as the pigment is applied, I let go. So that I'm doing as little additional damage to the eye as possible. And again, just buff and blend where it meets there. How pretty is that? I mean, come on. Oh, is that not just summer in a look? Oh yeah. Right, my lovelies, I am going to pause you while I go and pop some foundation and whatnot on. Uh, I'm going to have to wait for the next time that I press record in order to speak to you. But you, my lovelies, will see me absolutely blooming instantly. So I'll see you, uh, well, right now really. I am back with orange brows. Did my usual use revolution soap brow kit thing to brush my brows up, use the soap dry and then used a brow brush to brush some of this orange through the brow. The benefit of doing it this way is if you don't wet the soap it's a little bit tacky so you set it with whichever colour eyeshadow you put through your brow and it also clings to that powder better so it lasts through the day. Um, you don't have to use the soap brow kit, I got it because it's convenient but you can just use the spoolie and an ordinary bar of soap. Um, but I like the shape 
brush they've got in that kit. It's like a little mini toothbrush sh um, shape one, which is great for if you have stubborn brows, getting them to go up and stay up. Right, flat top brush. I'm going to boss, which is that orange. Link it up with the outer edge there. And run that along the lower lash line. I don't tend to put anything in my waterline because I struggle with watery eyes. I always have done. Add to that fibro wateriness. Add to that hay fever. And you end up with Niagara Falls, basically. I do sometimes, for photos, put a liner in there. But then nine times out of ten, by the time I've taken the photos, my eyes watering so much, most of it's come off anyway. Along with half my foundation, which is always a good thing. <coughs> right, this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette. Love, love, love this. It's flat topped, but chunky. It's perfect for blending out the lower lash line and I'm going to go into that yellow level up you don't have to use this brush obviously you can use any smudger brush or dense blending brush to do this with this just happens to be my favourite out of all the ones that I've used because I've got quite short lower lashes and this actually gets up underneath them without sort of like flicking powder into my eye, which is always nice. Love this palette. So pretty. Right, I've got a new e.l.f. one of their metallic highlighters. This is in shade White Gold. As you can see, untouched by human hand as of yet. So, this is a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay probably well over a decade ago now. So let's see what this highlighter is like, shall we? Pop some of it under the tail of our brow, because apparently, along with everything else, gravity affects our brows, as we get older, ladies and gents. And just adding a little bit of brightness under there just helps to lift the brow. Um, if you're not keen on using something like a highlighter like I use, you can always just use um, a matte shadow in a shade, one shade lighter than your skin tone. Pop some on the inner corner. And as always, I like to bring mine along under the tear duct and just blend it into the colour that I've put underneath the eye. I just think that helps finish the look off nicely. This is a very firmly packed highlighter. There's not much pigment coming up or kick up coming up at all. But there's pigment coming onto the brush, so. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this highlight on, put some mascara on, choose a lippy, do something with the hair, which is doing God knows what this morning. And I'll be back with my finished look and some more information on those flowers. So don't go anywhere. I am back. Lippy is one of my hourglass confessions. Um, remember I treated myself to this last year in sale because instead of the gold, the usual one, it's the lilac holder. And this is the shade My One Desire. <laughs> Not entirely sure it's the right shade for this look but it's the colour I felt like wearing today so yeah that's what happened 
Um, I applied some more of that highlighter. Um, I did spray my face first with the Slay All Day Rose. I usually do that anyway because it does just help the highlighter to pump. Um, if, it, if it hadn't given me the effect I wanted, I would have just laid a second highlighter over the top, or a third, or a fourth, until I was glowing so brightly, even the gods wouldn't be able to see what I'm up to. And there's a cat right outside my window looking at me as if to go, why are you talking to yourself, you stupid woman? Mascara is the Essence Lash Princess Volume, the orange top one. Uh, what else did you need to know? I think that was it, wasn't it, really? So, whilst I am telling you a wee bit more about the Daffodil and Jonquil, it would be awesome if you could be hitting that like button, leaving me a comment or two, and double checking you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people, but rather sneakily they are leaving me in your feed. So it appears I am you, you are still subscribed to me when you have actually been removed. So do double check that and double check your notification status too. Why is it the minute I press record I get an eye booger? Why is that? Hmm? Hmm? Why is that? So it's a lot, right? Yeah. Okay, so picture is here. Now, um, as you know from previous Zodiac films that I have done, the flower is done by a calendar month. Whereas the star sign obviously wraps around two months and Pisces goes from February the 19th to March the 20th. So what I do is whatever star sign falls on the first of the month for that flower, that's the flower that is classed as the flower for that sun sign or star sign. Um, if, you're a Pi if you're a February Pisces you may want to look at the Aquarius flower to see if they call to you more uh, but at least it does mean you have a little bit of a cheeky option so the flower daffodil and jonquil jonquils are interpreted as unequal love and are also associated with rebirth so be careful how you're giving those ones. Daffodils suggest good luck. However, if given as a single bloom rather than a bunch, is supposed to foretell misfortune. So both flowers have their good element and they're not so good. So take care when you are gifting them. My advice would be the biggish bunch of daffodils you can possibly find. Maybe avoiding the jonquils because uh, nobody wants unequal love, do they? I really hope that you have enjoyed this and that you like the finished look. Um, if you're wondering why my blush looks so today is because I actually used a bronzer. The, not that I'm going to be buying from them anymore, but I've got stuff that I've bought in the past. I'm going to use it up. This is the Sweetie Pie bronzer. I actually prefer using it as a blush. I think it's, because it has that slight sheen to it, I just, I would rather have a matte or a satin bronzer and a glowy blush than a glowy bronzer and a matte blush. That's just, just the way that I prefer it looking on my particular face. But you paint yours however 
you want to paint yours. Um, if you're new here, hi, hello, welcome. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it here. I'm guessing if you've made it this far through the film, there must have been something you liked. It would be awesome if you too would like to join the nicest family on YouTube. Super easy to do that. You hit that red subscribe button that's down there somewhere. And you turn it grey and then you ring my bell. Ring my bell. And choose all notifications and then keep saying yes, 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 yes. And all of them please. And then hopefully YouTube will tell you, oh god, I don't know, one in four of my films that go up. Speaking of my films, there are an awful lot that you can choose from to watch. Not just Zodiac themed, uh, I have an awful lot of other ones on there. So basically, as I've said for some time now, pick a playlist, grab a drink, with or without a funky sloth straw, grab a snack. Put your feet up and indulge. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.